Where Two Worlds Meet Written by Gordon Smith And read by George Waitman Prologue No parent should ever have to watch their child die, Mrs. Thornbury barked out loudly to the cold, empty kitchen. Shouting out made her feel that she was fighting back in her emotional battle, somehow stopping the sadness and anger from taking root in her body. As the words rebounded in echoes across the space, she screamed, Oh, this is so unfair! She dropped forwards to lean on the solid wooden table in front of her, aware that her arms were supporting more than her body weight. It felt as though a huge boulder was resting on her shoulders. Tears streamed from her eyes. She knew that she had to expel these emotions when they built up in her. She was trying so hard to be strong. Someone has to be strong in all of this, she said, in a more sedate tone to the empty fireplace on the other side of the room. She stood up straight and threw back her head, pushed away some long strands of wiry gray hair that had come loose from the stack bundled on the top of her head, and went to the back door. She needed to breathe in some fresh country air to remind herself of why she was here. Emerging from the narrow, dark wooden porch, she straightened her body to its full height, wiped her eyes with the back of her hands, and breathed in the warm, clear air from the endless space all about her. She knew the importance of letting go of these painful emotions, but she had to be strong to help her daughter and her family just now. After all, they were the ones who needed support. It was they who had lost a child, her granddaughter, Amber, who had recently died of cancer. She had to prepare this old cottage for them. Taking in her surroundings, from the run-down garden to the green expanse that stretched before her, she stopped thinking altogether for a moment, and stood completely still, at one with this country paradise. For so much of her young life, it had been a safe haven, a place where she had found healing and tranquility, a place that was now filled with magical memories. This was why she was bringing her family here, to find peace and to fix their broken lives after the terrible tragedy they had just been through. The remaining child, her grandson, came into her mind. Dill was so young, only ten years old. He needed to be cared for and given an understanding of what was really going on. Grief had taken his parents from him. Her hope was that this magical place would be the key to their return. She had total control of her emotions now, and a newfound strength began to enter her body, moving up through her feet as if the ground itself was charging her with energy. It felt as though a burst of strength and compassion had entered her being, and she knew that these were just two of the elements she required for the work that lay ahead of her. She wanted to stay here longer, and allow all the good memories of her own childhood to flood back into her mind, but she fought against it. She was aware of how powerful this place was, but it wasn't for her this time. No, everything it could give would be for her daughter and son-in-law. They had so much emotional weight to bear in the past few years. Turning her head slowly, she took one final look around the landscape, taking in the most obvious sight, which was a large hill with tall trees on the top reaching up to the blue sky. For a moment, she seemed to be looking at something happening in the space above it, and a smile broke over her face. She thought of her grandson, half shut her eyes, and made a wish. She wished that he would be touched by the same magic as she had been when she was growing up in this beautiful place. Then she disappeared back through the small wooden porch and into the old cottage. It was time. Something had begun. Chapter One A Dark Time 
Dill was standing in the overgrown garden at the back of his new home. The garden was as wild as the countryside that surrounded it. In fact, other than a small stone wall, which was half buried under moss, ivy, and ferns, there was no real way to distinguish where the garden ended and the vast expanse of wild scenery began. It was a chilly October day, and he was thinking about his sister, who had died the previous summer, and wondering where she was now. Did a part of her still exist somewhere? And if so, where? Darkness had entered his life since she left. No, it came before, didn't it? He blushed with embarrassment as he realized he'd spoken out loud to himself again. He wasn't exactly sure when this had started, but he was certain that it had only been since he'd come to the new house. That was a week ago now, but the darkness had been there before. He called it that because it made him scared at night when he was alone in his room. But that was in the old place, wasn't it? He'd done it again. Or had he? Something strange was definitely happening to him. His mind was pulled back to the bad dreams he'd had in his old house and how alone he'd felt. He felt the same now, even when his mum and dad were with him. It seemed so long since they'd all laughed together. His parents had been sad even before Amber had passed away, and Dill had felt it whenever he'd been with them. But the sadness was different from the scary darkness. There was something more threatening about that. Only when Dill was with his old grandma did he gain any relief from the heavy feelings that hung over his family. Grandma had a way of talking that made him feel at ease with everything. Maybe he felt this simply because she did speak to him, even about Amber's death. As far as he could remember, neither of his parents had talked to him about it. Not afterwards, anyway. They had told him it was going to happen, and then there had been silence. He wondered why, as he stared ahead into a rugged wilderness. A dot appeared in the distance. It seemed to disappear and reappear every few seconds, moving in and out of the mass of heather, bracken, and gorse that covered the rolling landscape all the way to a wooded area. Soon, it was getting bigger and closer and was moving erratically from side to side in a way that was almost hypnotic to watch. Dill smiled as it began to form into a shape, that of his big, old, floppy, bouncy, liver-and-white Springer Spaniel, Bramble, someone else who made him feel good. Dill had wanted Bramble to play with him in the garden, but every morning since they'd been in their new home, the dog had shot out of the door and dashed off into the wild terrain where she'd played for hours before staggering back with her head drooping and her steamy tongue hanging almost all the way down to the ground. But today, Bramble seemed to know that Dill needed her. It was almost as if they could talk to each other from a distance in a language that needed no words. He always knew either just before she wanted to go out or when she was coming home. He knew when she was hungry and when she wanted to play and in return, she seemed to know when he was afraid at night, or when he felt sad, and she would slap big kisses all over his face, or sit up on her back legs to make him giggle. In fact, Dill had noticed that lately, the dog was more attached to him than ever before. She had begun to show him more affection, and had started to sleep by his bed. When his parents had gone to bed, she would even get into bed with him, and snuggle tightly into his body until he fell asleep, to the gentle rhythm of her breathing. It was as if she was standing guard for him, making sure that no scary darkness could enter his room. He turned to look at the house for a moment and noticed that even though the sun was shining all around it on this crisp autumn morning, it seemed to be covered by a cloud. It reminded him that inside the cottage, everything was dark. Even his parents seemed to be covered in a dusty gray powder. It had begun to form around them just before his sister had gone into hospital for the last time. Is that when the darkness came? He said to himself in a low whisper that turned to vapor as it left his lips 
and was picked up and carried off by the cool breeze. He wanted to think more about this, but his attention was caught by Bramble, who was making high-pitched yelping sounds and tearing off in a new direction, as if on the trail of an animal or bird. Dill knew this sound, and it made him laugh. He could tell exactly what his dog was feeling at this moment, and she was very happy. Another thing he'd noticed about her was that she was the only one in the house who had light around her. Ever since Dill could remember, he'd seen light around people and animals, and Bramble was always shining brightly, even when his parents were very dark and sad. Since they had come to their new home, this had become even more apparent. The dog disappeared from his sight now, and his mind dropped back into memories of when his parents had told him that his sister had gone to heaven. They had told him that she was with his grandpa, and she was very happy there, and she was in a beautiful place of light, with angels and God. They'd made it sound amazing, but it didn't add up, Dill reckoned, because they'd still looked as though they were in pain, and it seemed as if she'd taken some of their light with her. He wondered if she'd had to use it to get into heaven. Maybe she'd send it back somehow. He really hoped that the light would come back to his parents, because even though they didn't speak much these days, he could tell what they were thinking and feeling in the same way as he could with the dog. When his mother smiled at him and told him how happy she was about moving to their new home, he felt that other words were being spoken from a place deep inside her. Words like joy and fun were coming out of her mouth, but her gut was saying guilt, regret, anger, and loss. It didn't make sense. The same thing was happening with his father, too. He kept talking about being brave and strong, and yet Dill could hear sobs inside him, and they seemed to be there all the time these days, even when his father played games with him and read to him and threw sticks for Bramble. It made him wonder about this heaven place. He knew that what his parents were telling him wasn't the truth, and he was angry about it. But then he remembered how sad they were and felt guilty for being cross with them. He also wondered why he could hear and feel things now that he couldn't before, and how it was possible to think so many things at once. Sometimes it felt as if his head would burst. Just in time, Bramble arrived with a dramatic leap over the stone wall, proudly showing off the spoils of her adventure, a disgustingly smelly stick, which she must have dragged out of the boggy patch just yards from the garden. She held it up for Dill to take an end and play with her, but it was so smelly that he ran away, calling out, No way, keep away, smelly dog with that disgusting stick. This just made her chase him round in circles, waving her stinky prize in the air, which caused a slimy green substance to fly in all directions. Brams, I meant it! Dill began to giggle and then laugh out loud, and the dog replied with low, playful growling sounds, which, if he read them right, meant that she was very happy at the response she'd got from her friend. Dill knew that Bramble would never be allowed in the house with that trophy, and also because the entire lower half of her body was covered in the same slime as the disgusting stick. Yet even though almost all of the white parts of her body were covered in dark slime, she still had a bright white glow around her. Dill gazed down at her as she lay on a patch of grass, bathing in what little warmth there was on this chilly day and panting so hard that white puffs of steam were coming off her long tongue. Once again, he heard her silent laughter and began to laugh out loud himself as he fell to his knees beside her. Instantly, she rolled over, asking for her mucky tummy to be rubbed, but there was no way he was ever going to put his hand near her filthy underside. His mother opened the kitchen window. Time for lunch, Dill, and don't let that filthy animal anywhere near my clean kitchen floor. He always felt sorry when Bramble had to remain outdoors while he ate. But a warm slurp of big wet spaniel tongue on the side of his face told him that she didn't mind. 
Besides, she had lots of work to do, pulling her scabby old stick to pieces. The kitchen seemed dark, and a heaviness filled the room in spite of the warm fire that was burning in the fireplace. Dill loved the open fires in this new house, and the sound of wood crackling always made him feel at peace. Lunch was on the big wooden table, which meant that he had to sit on a cushion on a heavy wooden chair to reach it. He was quite small for his age, though he remembered being told how grown up he was becoming by his grandma three weeks ago on his birthday. He had felt happy that day, because it had been the first time his parents had had light around them in ever such a long time. He suddenly realized that he missed his grandma. She had always stayed with him when his parents had had to take his sister to the hospital. Grandma always had light around her, and he could never remember hearing hidden words when she spoke to him. Her words were always straightforward and always made him feel good and safe and protected. As he looked down at his plate, he thought of her and wondered when she would come to stay with them. She had promised she would. His mother was looking very tired. Her eyes were red around the edges again, and she was smiling one of the smiles that made her look very sad. Even though she made no sound, he could hear sobs and dull, muffled whispers from somewhere in the depth of her stomach. As she pushed her hair back from her face, he noticed how little was left of her nails. He tried to remember when she had started to bite them. There was an awkward moment of silence that seemed to hold them both in freeze frame. Suddenly, she broke it by saying, Dylan, I want you to eat all your lunch before you go back out to the garden. The food will give you warmth and make you strong. It's getting cold outside too, and I want you to wrap up. Oh, and don't let that dog jump up on you. She is filthy and will have to be bathed before she comes indoors. Dill found it hard to take in all the words, as his mind was still on pause. So instead, he just nodded and began to eat the bowl of warm vegetable soup that was in front of him. He took one of the two pieces of bread that accompanied it and put it in his pocket, as he knew that Bramble would want something to eat too. She must be cold, he thought, and she needs food to give her strength and warmth as well. Footsteps were coming from the room above, which his father used as an office. It was where he did all his work now. Dill didn't really know what he did as a job, but it involved a big computer and lots of talking on the telephone. He'd been told that his father wouldn't have to go out to work when they moved to the new house, but he hadn't realized he'd see less of him than when they lived in the old place. Not that he'd spent that much time with him then, as he'd had to go away on work trips a lot, as well as the trips he'd made with his mother and sister. Dill had hoped that in this house he'd be able to play with his father more, but instead he'd retreated into his office. Even Bramble missed going for walks with him. She'd get so excited when he lifted her lead and whistled for her. Dill always loved the scene she would make. She would spin round and round on the same spot, making it difficult for his father to attach the lead to her collar and when she eventually did sit like a good girl, her bum would wriggle on the floor. Then she would fluff out her long furry ears. Just remembering it made Dill feel happy. Lunch was over now, and he couldn't wait to get back out with the dog. She was waiting for him because she knew that he had a treat for her in his pocket. Bramble could find anything, especially when it came to food, and Dill wasn't even fully out of the back door when she snatched the chunk of bread from his pocket and swallowed it in one gulp. As soon as Dill entered the garden, he felt better. The heaviness that entered his stomach when he went indoors would leave the moment he stepped out of the door, especially when he was with his dog. They played for a long time at Bramble's favorite game, which was chasing her old tennis ball. No matter how far Dill threw it, or how deep it went into the bushes and ferns around the garden, she would always emerge with it in her mouth and run back to him with it, her head in the air and her small docked tail wagging to show just how clever she was. The days seemed to last longer in this place, and the only way Dill realized it was becoming nighttime was when the sun changed from a bright ball of yellow light 
into an even bigger ball of soft pink, or sometimes orange or red light, which always happened when it was over the small trees to the right of the house, and just before it began to sink out of sight behind them. In the daytime, it seemed to sit on the highest hill in sight, the one that had all the trees at the top of it, which lay to the left of the back garden. Dill liked looking at that hill, and even more so when it seemed as though the sun was touching the very high tree at the top of it. As he threw the ball once more for Bramble, he felt that his mother was going to come to the window and call his name. A second later, it happened. He was getting good at sensing things, he decided. He could even hear his father coming downstairs, although he should have been too far away from the house to hear his footsteps. He also knew that something was being said about his father going away on a trip again. Bramble could sense something also. Dill could tell by the way she dropped her ears that there was something not right in the house. He wondered if it was easier to sense things if they were bad. Slowly, they walked towards the back porch. Dill took a quick look at Bramble's paws and reckoned she was clean enough to come into the kitchen with him. Both his parents were sitting at the table, talking. I do feel things, and I can't believe you would say that, his father was saying. What? And I don't. The atmosphere was tense, but as Dill entered the room, his father turned and looked at him and tried to smile. Son, I've got to go on a trip, but it's not for long, and I promise you that you'll love the surprise I bring back for you. It's only for a few days, his mother added in a chirpy voice that didn't match the moment. And wait till you see what he brings back. Dill smiled back at her, looking for light to appear around her the way it used to when she was truly happy. It wasn't there. His father reached over and ruffled his son's blonde hair with his big hand. Be a good boy and look after your mother while I'm away, he said, and I promise I'll have much more time to play with you when I get back. He reached out his other hand in the direction of the dog and invited her to jump up onto his lap which she did without hesitation. As she began to lick his face, though, he tried to push her away. Get off, you big soppy thing, he laughed. For the first time in ages, Dill saw a faint circle of light around his father's body. But then, it was gone. After supper, Dill had to wash and get ready for bed, and Bramble had to be fed and wiped down with a damp towel. She was to be spared the humiliation of a bath that night, which was good because it meant she would be allowed to be with him in his room again. Dill climbed a small wooden staircase that led to his bedroom, headed for the big old-fashioned bed, and got under the covers. The room was still full of unopened boxes with stuff from his old house, so there wasn't much room for him to play there yet, but he did like the room, even though the walls were covered with old flowery wallpaper, which made it look like his grandma's bedroom, and there were no curtains on the windows yet. But that was good too, because he loved this time of night, when he could still see for miles in the fading light. Every night, he would see animals and large birds moving around outside, and he especially loved to watch a family of rabbits who would come into the garden beneath his window. They would bounce around and then stop and drop their ears down onto their backs, and it made him laugh when their noses moved up and down. He always thought that they were talking to one another when they did that. Sometimes he even thought he could hear them speaking inside his head. Maybe he could, in the same way that he did with the dog. There was always a special feeling that touched him in this twilight time before sleep. His world felt empty for a moment, empty of all feeling. Bramble bounced up the stairs and came into the room. She pushed her brown and white nose towards Dill's face and kissed him on the cheek, the way she always did, then walked around in circles for a moment, the way she always did, before collapsing in a heap on the floor and letting out a loud sigh. Dill sighed with her. It was as if their breathing had synchronized. He was becoming tired now, and his body and mind relaxed 
as he looked out of the window towards the little hills that went up and down all the way to the large hill with the crown of trees and the tall tree in the middle, the one that resembled a hand reaching up to hold the sun by day and now the moon by night. He tried to count the trees, but he couldn't have got past six or seven before he'd fallen into a deep sleep. Bramble leaped onto the bed beside him, dropped like a sack, and let out one more loud sigh, as if she knew it was okay for her to sleep now that her best friend was at peace for another night. There was a light around the animal, and it appeared to expand and encompass the boy, as if it was holding him in a protective membrane. The dog finally followed the boy into peaceful sleep, at the same time as the small bedroom window turned black, hiding the rugged world they now lived in.